Let's upgrade this image by adding some effects and making it this image. With your picture already open in Photoshop, we're going to make a new layer. The way I do these effects is very similar to how I do the lightsabers. It's going to be pretty much the same process, just with a different amount of layers. And I think it's really cool to know how to do this because it can be applied for other things to give, you know, just a general glow. Since these eyes are perfect circles, I'm just going to select my brush tool, make it the right size. It's a hard brush, it's a circle, it's at white, and I'm just going to paint two circles on the eyes. And because this chest part isn't a perfect circle, I'm going to use the ellipse tool and make the correct shape. There might be a more efficient way to do this part, but I ended up making a new layer and then making the ellipse and filling it with white. On Mac, it's Command Delete and whatever your secondary color is, it'll fill it with that color. And then I did Command T to transform it just to make it perfect and move it perfectly in the center. And then I combined this layer with the original layer with the eyes in it just to make one layer it is a good habit to get into with naming your layers especially when you start adding a lot of these effects so here i am changing this layer to red circles pretty creative right after this base layer is set this is where a lot of the blurring comes into play and you can use this for other items and effects i make copies by having the layer selected and pushing command j we are going to make four copies of this. So it's gonna be a total of five layers with the topmost layer selected. So here it's red circles, copy four. You're going to apply a Gaussian blur, filter Gaussian blur, and you're going to set it to 40. And then with the layer underneath, you're going to do the exact same thing, filter Gaussian blur, but set it to 20. And then with copy number two, you're going to add filter Gaussian blur, but set it to 10. And then the last Gaussian blur is going to be set to four. For this one, I have the original layer just untouched and just in case I need to redo something. So I'm not using that original layer, I just turn it off. Selecting the top three layers, you're going to combine them, Command E, and then select that top layer and set the blend mode to screen. And then we're going to go to image and hue saturation, and we're gonna change the color. At the bottom right of this window, select colorize, and then go to saturation 100, and then the lightness down to negative 50. And this one you can kind of play around with. I feel like negative 50 is usually a good number. You can kind of adjust the opacity to your liking for the effect on this Magna Guard. I kind of wanted to bring that fill down a little bit because it's not, like a bright effect, like a lightsaber. So this kind of helps keep it subtle. So feel free to copy these settings exactly because I think it looks really good for this guy, but some other effects you might need to adjust with more with less fill or more fill, or you can duplicate the red glow layer that you colorized. And like I do that with lightsaber sometimes to really make it pop. But once again, for these eyes, and this effect on this guard, I didn't want it to like pop too much and be too bright. So I kept it pretty, pretty simple. That's pretty much it for now with these red circles and this effect. Now we're going to move on to the lightning and see how you can create some lightning. So this is gonna be the purple lightning effect that we are going to make. It is gonna be using the same technique with the multiple layers and the blur, which we'll see later. But first, we can't just draw this lightning like we did for the circles or the ovals. So we need to make that lightning pattern. So there can be different ways of using a lightning brush or you can get some lightning from images online that you can overlay on this and use that. But you can also just make it from scratch here on Photoshop and I really like this technique. So on a new layer, you're going to select the gradient tool and just kind of make it at this pattern. I don't think how it aligns matters too much, but it needs to be black and white. And then go to filter and select difference clouds. You can just go to rasterize to get rid of the smart object. And we have this, it looks just like lightning, right? With this layer selected, we're going to invert it, push command I, and now we're going to adjust the levels of it. So you could go to image levels, or you could push command L and the levels menu will pop up. 
And what we're going to do is grab this left shadows tab and just drag it all the way to the right, pretty much. And you can see how it eliminates a lot of that extra gray. And so you should be left with just like black and white. And these lines are going to be your lightning. So this is going to be random. So your image might not look exactly like mine here because you can also do difference clouds again and again, and it'll keep changing the effect and giving you different results. But you should end up something like this. And once you have this on the same layer, you're going to select, I use the lasso tool and just go around a piece that you like that that is gonna go with your effect. Like if you're not doing it on a Magna Guard, you can do it on a, uh, like whatever you're, whatever you're doing this effect on, if you want to use it for like a flash running or something, then select the lightning or select this these squiggly lines that look the most like the effect you want. You're going to push Command J to make a copy of that piece. And so you need to keep selecting that layer and then, then you do the lasso and Command J. So here I'm kind of grabbing some straight lines. I like some of them with the little angle on it uh, so it's it, it can kind of be all connected which you'll see in a little bit so i'm just selecting four but i mean this is where you can select as many or as little as you want you might just need one so just select one even grabbing you know some of the shapes for certain effects like that could be cool too but i really like this technique to make this lightning and it also might not look exactly like lightning, but for some of these effects, like I don't want it to be lightning in the sky. You know, even even on Thor, like if I'm using it for a, like some Thor effect, I don't need it to look like a lightning bolt in the sky. I just need to look like that, like some energy coming off of him. And so same with here is I really like how these don't look exactly like, like lightning and you're able to blend them and manipulate them a little bit, especially once we apply the blur effect, it's going to really look cool. And then once you have these, they're gonna be kind of spread out wherever they were on that, on that original layer and you need to move them. And also you need to go set the blending mode to screen. So once you do that, it's going to eliminate all the black in that layer. So once you have as many as you want, you, you can resize them, rotate them, uh, distort them, whatever you need to get your effect across here. I pretty much uh, just made them big and then I rotated them to get the right angle. I even flipped some because I wanted, you know, certain parts to, to be on, on different, uh, different sides. After I did get them set on some of them, I also went back and added, like went back to the levels and I brought the black shadows tab again more to the right, just to make it a cleaner looking bolt image. Once you're happy with how this looks, you can select all the layers and then you're going to merge them together, command E, and then you're going to set it to screen because it might revert back to the black. And with this layer selected, we're going to do our blur glow effects routine and make four copies of it. And then it's the same process as before with the top layer 40, the third layer 20, the second layer 10, and then the last layer four. And then we can leave the original layer, just turn it off and leave it as a backup. And here with our top three layers we're going to combine them and then color them so select so go to hue saturation and select colorize and another thing that I'm doing differently here is once I find the color that I like saturation at 100 I am going to change the lightness a bit and I'm going to play with it a little more and so instead of negative 50 like I did on the other one I kind of like the way negative 30 31 looked like it kind of eliminated some of the extra noise and made the, the bolt more clear. So I like that. So that's pretty much it for this basic effect here. But now we are going to tune it up and blend all of these effects together just to really make them pop and look like a part of the image and not just thrown on. So we have this front lightning already done. And instead of doing the whole thing again for the backside, since it's pretty much exactly the same, and it's not even that visible here, I'm going to duplicate this layer that we did with the lightning, and I'm just gonna flip it and then rotate it and move it back. 
So it's the exact same looking thing, but it's just, it's flipped and it's back there. I did tune this one up a little bit and just kind of made it a little bit bigger overall. Now that I have it all combined into one, I forgot to name it before, but we're gonna name this one Lightning Fronts and then the one in the back, Lightning Back. You might not be able to tell too much, but I did apply an extra layer of Gaussian blur to the front just because of the depth of field, like the staff is kind of closer to the camera and the same with the one in the back, it's farther away. So it's going to have like a different blur to it. And, and I didn't want it to be obvious and weird looking. Like I could have left it as is and it probably would have had the same effect, but you know, I just want it to be a little extra and blur it to really give it some, some more character. So you can see here closer up that it, it's, it's blurred. It's blurred a little more. So now we're going to tune this up and let's make a new layer and we're going to call this one white glow. We're going to set the blending mode already to overlay and just with a soft white brush, just a circle brush, nothing fancy. It's got kind of like a glass, like electrical coil thing going on. But I also like this just to, you know, blend that lightning with that glass end just to make it seem like there's some energy coming out of it. And I did really like this layer to be underneath the lightning. So I don't want, I don't want this glow to be on top of it. I wanted the, the glow to be underneath the lightning. So just a better way to, to see what I'm doing, I turned off that lightning front layer and then just added this glow. And then I kind of just added to the back too, which isn't too obvious because it's back there and it's only a little piece. So after I turn it back on, I'm gonna drag this white glow underneath the lightning layer. And so now doing the same thing, but with purple, we have a new layer calling it purple glow, set it to overlay. I'm gonna color grab this purple that I already used for the lightning. By holding the option key, you can select any color on the image by clicking it, and then it'll set your color palette tab to that color. And with the blending mode overlay, instead of just painting it on the glass tube, I am gonna kind of paint it all around the lightning just to give like a full extra lightning glow effect. So these are light sources that we are creating. Sometimes depending on the light source, it's not gonna be as obvious, like whether it's it's dark or bright, but I think adding this little touch can can really help blend it. So by making a new layer, I'm calling this soft light. We're changing the blending mode to soft light. And I have the same color selected. It's a soft brush. And I'm going to paint this on around the, the glow. So I don't need to paint it over the lightning, but you know, it's kind of glowing on the, on the staff, maybe a little on his hand because that lightning is a little close to it. So I'm gonna paint that purple on there. And because we have the, the blend mode set to soft light, it's not going to be just a purple dot or, you know, mess. It's kind of it's kind of a nice glow. And for the chest piece and the eyes, that's not a huge light source either, but still a little glow effect. And so I ended up painting around the eyes and the chest piece with the red just to give it a little more blend and just to make it pop a little bit more. Was this completely necessary? Would the image still be cool without it? Probably, but I like it and I think I think it looks really cool for the finishing touch to really help blend it all together I had already used some smoke brushes on this image for for the background and for this for the sets But now we're going to add them again for these effects with your smoke brushes selected You're going to make a new layer. You can call this smoke and We're going to color select this purple again and just kind of lightly paint around giving that giving that smoke and giving it some some extra life and texture around it. I did also do this for the red effects, but I did it extra light because once again those aren't huge light sources and so I didn't want to like overdo it. I just kind of wanted to give it a small little extra flavor there. That's pretty much it for this image on how I added these effects and blended them to make them look real. If you do try this, tag me in your work. I'd love to see it. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate you, create and inspire.